I'm Nicholas with Mayweather Power Systems here. And I'm operating right here. So we have the Mayweather Power Systems. It's a 17,000 230 volt unit. And then over here we have a competitor 16,000, also 230 volt unit. Uh, and we're putting them on a little bit of a head to head to um, look at some of the differences between our units and some of our competitor systems in here. So if we come over here and uh, we have a few distinct differences. First thing you'll see over here is when you look at the coil, our evaporator coil is copper. So we have copper fins along with our um, copper coil. So it's copper on copper for better heat transfer. As well as better heat transfer, we also have uh, antimicrobial properties. As well as longer life because we don't have the similar metals in there. If you look at the filter that we're using, it's a nice molded plastic filter. You can remove it. It's very easy to clean. This will last the life of your unit. There's no replacing this. If we look at the competitor's option over here, this is what you get on those units. Um, and over a few years, you tend to have these little strings that pop out. And so every couple years, you need to uh, you need to replace this. Also, putting it in, you need to be a bit more advanced. You need to really work it in. It's not quite that complicated, but it's an added step in here. Um, you'll see over here, here we're talking about an aluminum evaporator. So this is bare aluminum, no coating, no nothing. Um, so we have aluminum with copper. And over a few years, what typically happens is that this aluminum tends to somewhat fall apart. Looking at the, um, the Freon lines, you'll see that they're using, this is 516 copper. So obviously it does not allow the same flow of refrigerant as us with our 3 8 uh, When you look at the size of the physical evaporator, you see how massive this really is here. It really gives a lot of space to dissipate. When you compare over here, it's about half the size of what we're using. The other thing is gonna be the spacing between the evaporator here and our blower. You can see how much space we have over here. So we don't have liquid that comes out of the blower. We're, we maintain very dry air coming out of the unit. Uh, regarding the pan, we're both using 316 stainless steel. The difference is we're using uh, welded plugs. Yeah, no. So we're using welded plugs in here. So all you have to do is, is all you have to do is thread in a male fitting right in here. If you look at the competitor system over here on this side, number one, it's a bit higher than where ours is. So we tend to have a lot more sitting water in the drain pan of the unit. So you have to give it a lot of angle. Number two is that you typically need to have a nut on the other side of this fitting here. So sometimes fitting your finger is not quite that practical when you're inside of the pan, putting a nut in there. Um, it tends to be a bit more complicated on the installation side. Uh, another notable difference is gonna be the condenser that we're using. We're using V30 Cooper Nickel. So V30 Cooper Nickel means that it's a 70-30, 70% copper, 30% nickel versus the competitors with the, uh, with the 9010. So the 9010 primary difference is um, less resistance, less corrosion resistance in the marine environment. So this is what's known as a 10 year rated coil. And then our units are double that with a 20 year rated coil. And that's, that's assisting our units to make them better, make them last longer. Regarding the blower rotation, so the blower rotation, we have a simple hose clamp right over here. You loosen this clamp, and then the whole blower can be rotated, so we can go straight up. Then on the competitor's unit to rotate the blower. So we have two configurations available on this blower. It can be blowing this way, or it can also blow straight up. The difference is, if you want to do that, you're removing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws. This whole plate, this whole piece here is gonna separate from the evaporator and then you're gonna rotate the whole piece and put those screws back in place. 
it's possible. It's not a crazy job to do. Um, but once again, with space constraints, it can be a bit finicky and it can be a bit frustrating when you have to do that. Um, now let's talk about amperage draw. So coming over here to this unit, once again, keep in mind it's a 16,000 BTU. This unit's drawing, drawing 5.1 amps. This is at 230 volts, a 16,000 BTU. Then we have our unit, it's a 17,000 BTU. like to see is what the difference is going to be regarding the um, the actual BTU output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these um, these testo probes here. So I'm going to have one at the supply and I'm going to have another one, I'm sorry, one at the return and then one at the supply. And um, after calculating what the CFMs are that we're going to use, and then I'm going to be doing it through the uh, through the Testo app over here, so we're going to be able to calculate how many CFMs we're going to be blowing out of this uh, out of this duct right now. So if we come over here, this is going to be I'm going to check the BTU um, output of the 16,000 BTU first. So if we look at the app, I'm going to be trying to get I'm going to look around here and see the highest number. Seems like I found the sweet spot right here. I would say we're right around, it looks like we're right around 400. We'll call it 420. pretty impressive it's 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 still producing over 17,000 BTUs now we're gonna go on to the 17,000 so you can see that this duct here is coming up to 17,000 BTU Here we'll call it 460 CFMs. producing over 21,000 BTUs for the 17,000 BTU self-contained unit. So we're able to draw half an amp less. We're producing about 4,000 BTUs more than a competitor system. Um, if we're going to look at the duct length, we're both, these are both using 6 inch ducts. You can see that, if anything, ours is slightly more kinks because I have a slight drop in this line here. Ours is slightly longer, but I wanted to give the competitors the benefit of the doubt. I don't want someone coming to me and saying that I made it unfair for the neighbor to be more powerful. Um, besides that, if you look over here at the drain again, when we look at how much water's coming out here, you can see it's, it's just kind of dripping out. And when we go and look at the neighbor unit, you can see how we just have a steady stream of water. That's all the moisture that we're taking out of the air. So you can see that we're really drying the air over here. We're taking a lot of moisture out. It's you could, you could almost put this water back in a tank and drink it. That's how much water we're getting out of there. Um, outside of there, another interesting tidbit is, um, although we are using a remote sensor with this unit, which isn't included, um, we added a remote sensor. We're reading 73 degrees. Versus our unit. 
Bradford really shouldn't have this plastic on for this video. Pretty 76 degrees. Outside of that, what comes with the unit? When you order a maple unit, you are getting your display, you're getting your bezel, you're getting this remote air sensor, you're getting your mounting feet, and you're getting a little roll of insulation tape. So if you're replacing, um, if you're replacing an existing unit, you have a unit installed in your boat, you want to retrofit it with a major unit, you have absolutely everything you need to do that. The unit comes with the mounting ring. This unit does come with a mounting ring as well. Although another difference is that this particular unit has a one-year warranty. Um, this unit carries a two-year warranty, so it's one-year parts and labor, second-year parts only. And it actually carries a lifetime warranty on the compressor, which is something that is unheard of in air conditioning, but we're so confident in the way that we design these systems and so confident in our choice of compressors that we're giving you a lifetime warranty in your compressor. Um, another interesting thing is that as far as the warranties go, um, you buy this unit, you have it on your boat, you sell your boat, it doesn't matter. The warranty follows the unit, the warranty doesn't follow the original purchaser, so we didn't want to go that route, so that is another way that we want it to be more fair to our customers. Another principal difference on these 230 volt systems is that this system is 5060. It'll run 230 volt in the US um, at 60 cycles. If the boat's gonna be traveling, going to Europe, you wanna have 50 hertz, use the same boat in 50 hertz, there's not a problem with these systems. They run in both 50 and 60 cycles. Um, it's not some special option, it's not something else that you need to purchase. It comes standard with the units, as it had since these units first started. Um, apart from that, you'll see the pan. So we were talking about the blower being able to rotate. Another benefit to this pan here is due to this narrow width, if we have an issue, very tight spot to fit the unit into, what we can do is the blower is removable. So you remove that screw, you remove that, you loosen that clamp, the whole blower comes off, you can fit the unit in where you need it to go. You can mount the blower back in the area that, that you're, uh, once it's installed in its, in its uh, location. And it makes it a bit easier to, to install the unit without having this piece here because you're fitting in an L shape versus a rectangle. So then you see it widens back up over here. It stays this wide the entire route and uh, so we made the modification because we realized on installations it made it easier for us when we didn't have to deal with this whole side. It's not an everyday occurrence but when it does happen it is greatly appreciated to not have all this added space. Another thing to look at here is when we're looking at these welds. Look at the weld over here. Um, we have another weld over here. We have another weld over here. When you're looking at all these welds, they're very clean welds. These are all done by um, by CNC Robotics. This is not something done by hand. It's not a person that's doing each and every weld. Although if you look over here, you can see that these welds do tend to be a bit sloppier. And these welds will vary from unit to unit. There's hot points. Uh, where we do have the hot points, the copper's gonna be a bit more brittle and more likely to have leaks. So last part about this is we're going to talk about the unit's built-in safeties. So built-in safeties that are in integrated into this unit, we have a sensor right here on the condenser, on the condensing coil. So we have, um, if this condenser gets too hot, when in cool mode, it's going to shut off the unit to protect uh, high coil temperature. If it's very limit, you may see this high pressure switch kick in. So you'll have a high pressure fault rather than your um, your condenser faults. 
Uh, if in cool mode, if this gets too cold, it's going to give you a freeze protection. And we have the same thing over here on the evaporator. So on the evaporator here, we have the same thing as this. If this is a change temperature, it's going to let us know that we don't have enough uh, freon in the unit. It'll give us uh, an alarm for that. If we're running too high, too hot in heat mode, um, we'll know that either the fan's not running fast enough, we have a restricted vent, a uh, restricted um, return, something's blocking, but we just were overheating the compressor. As well as uh, freeze protection if this starts freezing up. So we don't base ourselves on a lot of algorithms and, and uh, some different sciences that tend to be more of a pain than anything else. Um, we wanted to have something simple uh, but very functional. And uh, with the safeties that we have in here, we've had very few failures and a lot of positive response in the uh, in the market with the safeties that we have put in place. And it's also reduced the failure rate of our units. 